Hey, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Amen. Amen. Whether you're a mama or you got a mama, we are saying happy Mother's Day to you ladies. And we got a special gift for you at the end of the close of the service today. I think you're going to like and enjoy. Daniel will come and we're going to start off with the choir singing this morning called In Christ Alone. Amen. In Christ Alone. Amen. <laughs> stand with me. We'll turn in your hymnals to number 238. This is the day. I hope this is the day you said happy Mother's Day. I really hope it is. All right, but this is the day, number 238, and y'all go ahead and join with me in that chorus, and then we'll have a time of handshaking, a time of smiling at one another, and then we'll come back and sing it again. So number 238. Are you there with me? All right, here we go. Are you there with me? Amen. Oh, there we go. All right, cool. We're there. Wonderful. Try that with me. This is the hour that the Lord hath made. This is the hour. This is the hour that the Lord hath made. That the Lord hath made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the hour that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the hour. This is the hour. 
make some hands. Everybody wants to come on back to your seats and grab your hymnals. If you forgot what number you're on, let's turn to number 238. We'll sing that again. Number 238, this is the day. Here we go. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it. y'all y'all may be seated and uh we had a great weekend and i'll pastor probably say something about the weekend here if you'll yep. come on. Uh, but we had a couples retreat at the edge christian camp and i'm just wondering who is who has never been out to the camp uh we support the edge christian camp out by surrey who has never been out to the edge christian camp okay 
And we got several people that have never been out there. We had an amazing couples retreat that we went to. Uh, Evangelist Rhonda Gard was uh, preaching there. And uh, we just got fire hosed with some information for the first few sessions. And then he started preaching to us. Uh, first, it was about uh, fire hose inf information about communication. Then he was preaching about communication between husband and wife and the things that could tie up that communication and prevent a peaceful home. And I'm glad that we got to hear it. And I encourage you all to come out for the next one. Put it on your calendars for next year. Uh, if you are a couple and you can make it, it is a great time to be out there. Uh, we do have another event coming up, uh, Family Day, on the 27th of uh, this month. And it is an all-day thing. We have a van leaving to the camp in the morning, and more information will be coming out on that. Uh, but it is a free day. Q Daddy's is catering lunch. I've never heard of Q Daddy's. Just put that name with the best barbecue place ever, and that is what you're going to be having for lunch out there. Plus, all the fun camp games and everything like that are going to be out there. Uh, Dwight Smith, evangelist, he's going to be preaching. The Reigns family, a great musical family, is going to be doing special music, and it's just going to be a fantastic time. So I do encourage you all to come on out. You don't have to ride with us. You can drive on your own, but it's about an hour, 15 minutes from here. Uh, across the James River, go past Surrey, and when you've uh, thought that you're out there in the woods and hearing banjos, you're right there. Okay, that's about where the camp is. So, but I know that, uh, I'm going to fast forward now. Our bulletin says we had a Mother's Day video. Uh, I have to ask that y'all forgive me on that one because of all the stuff going on. I neglected to get a video, so I do ask your forgiveness. Um, but, you know, coming up tonight, if you want to come back and join us tonight, we have a message that we have recorded from Dr. S.M. Davis. And uh, he is a great, great preacher on the family. And we're going to be playing his message tonight. We're doing that every Monday night, or every Sunday night, sorry, every Sunday night in May. And um, if you ever wanted to hear any kind of input about how to help your family, then you do not want to miss any of these Sunday nights. Uh, we're not going to put these on live because his graphics and everything are copyrighted. So if you want to hear this message, then you have to be here. Uh, but that's not bad because we get to see you, right? And that means you get to see us, right? Yeah, right, right. Okay. <laughs> Make me feel better, please. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it's, it's going to be a blessing. It is going to be a blessing. Y'all come and hear Dr. Davis and hear what he has to say. The three key elements on, ascent, or, uh, on successful parenting. Three key elements on successful parenting is what we're going to go over tonight. Um, I'm going to go over one more thing, Pastor. Um, for those of y'all that follow on Facebook Live, when you're not here, this will be the last Sunday that we are broadcasting on Facebook Live due to some different tech or technical issues and uh, other things, we're gonna switch over to YouTube Live. So if you wanna catch one of our services live, you're gonna have to catch it on YouTube Live starting next Sunday morning. All the services are archived on YouTube already, and the information is in your bulletin what channel on YouTube to go to. Uh, but our Facebook channel for Central Baptist Church Yorktown will become more like a bulletin board. So information concerning church members, events coming up, things, um, uh, activities to do. Uh, we'll put snippets of different uh, special music or snippets of different portions of sermons on Facebook, but we will no longer be posting our services on Facebook Live. You have to go to YouTube if you're missing a service to catch one of those. And uh, it's not hard. If you have Facebook on your phone or on your computer, you probably have YouTube. So just switch over to the other widget and you'll be just fine. It's gonna work out for us uh, tech-wise anyways. And I uh, appreciate y'all working with us and we just wanna let you know before you try to pop on there and not find us. Um, other things coming up Saturday, this coming Saturday, men's Bible study. We also have visitation, so please join us for that. And I'm not going to try to step on any more toes for announcements, but I do want to jump into another hymn, and then we're going to have our offering. So if y'all would stand up and uh, turn to number three. And we're going to sing Come Thou Found, number three. And these first sections in here, these are worship songs in this Bible Truth hymnal. And... Uh, just thoughts about God and how good he is and how great he is and, and how big he is and how powerful he is and all these thoughts come to your mind when you're singing this song and uh, all these songs in this first part of this book and I just want to I just want to encourage you God is watching your hearts as you're singing and he wants to look at your heart and he wants to see something good because you're saying something good to him all right so when we're singing these words sing them out like you mean it because that's what God is looking for God's not looking for your quality of voice he's looking for quality of heart when you sing so we're going to do all three verses, and then we'll have the offering. Guys will come down in that third verse. Come thou fount. Come thou fount of every blessing. In my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. All for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song, and sung by flaming tongues above.
don't you go ahead and pray, and then we'll have the offering. Father in heaven, Lord, how we praise and thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, how we thank you for your mercy and grace, all the things bestowed to us because you love us, Lord. Lord, let us return some of that love back to you, Father God. We pray you bless this offering, Lord God, uh, because it already belongs to you, Father God, that it be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. so glad my sister and Ricky, your husband, are here. I enjoy. Uh, this is Mama's Day, and uh, it's not always an easy day for her or I, but uh, 
Susan and I have a great love for our mother. And uh, Isabel just sang the song, It's Only By His Grace, right? That we're saved, and yet it's only by His grace that we go through life, and we need God's grace to help us through everything. Mama stood there at the sink, and a little boy came up to her. She's washing dishes, and she looks up at her. And Mama, he says, Mama. And she looks down at him, and she's washing the dishes. And he says, Mama, it's going to be a great day. And Mama nodded her head to the little boy and said, Mama, nobody's going to say no. <laughs> she's looking at him again. And Mama, we're going to have a good time. So today, mamas, if you can help it, well, you don't have to say as many no's today, and show some more grace, or I should say mercy, right? Mercy is not getting what you do deserve, punishment. Grace is getting what you don't deserve, God's goodness, right? Well, you can show some mercy and grace again today, as you've done all throughout the year. I want to personally say a big happy Mama's Day to all of you, okay? Some say mother, some say mom, some say mommy, little children, but my sister and I, we would say mama. And Mama, we're going to greatly miss today. And hopefully I'll be able to share a few things with you a little bit uh, in regards to that. But all you mamas, you know, we've got uh, Josiah and Laura here, my son-in-law, my daughter, and little Allie's with them today, Alexandra, and uh, John and Sarah and Grayson, and uh, Ethan is on his way in July. Amen. Sarah's due to have a baby in July. And... <laughs> and Brian and Jessica and uh, Quinn and Clara. Well, we just got a lot of good family here today. I just love them to death. And Carrie. Oh. <laughs> Some things are best forgotten, amen? <laughs> oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's right. He drove me up here. He's driving me home. I'm really going to have to pray a lot today. I love you, Carrie. Can't you tell? Amen. Amy is missing out of our crowd today. Our daughter Amy, she's down in Pensacola Christian College, down that way for the graduation yesterday of her fiancé. Drew graduated with one of the highest honors in the school. I was very proud of him, very proud of him. And, uh, you know, I, I, t <coughs> I told him, I said, you know, I'm so glad and I'm so thankful for how well, you've done it in school. He's going to be a history teacher in a Christian school in Richmond. The sad part is he's marrying Amy in, in December and taking her away from us. Uh, but they won't be far down the road, about an hour down the road, on the east side of Richmond in Mechanicsville. So I said, you know, I'm, I'm really blessed, and I know you're the right man for my daughter uh, because, like I, I say with my wife, I don't criticize my wife's judgment. Because look, in the beginning, look who she chose to marry. <laughs> oh, come on now. Anyway, that was bad. That was bad. So you, I said, Drew, you chose to marry my daughter, Amy, so I can't criticize your judgment, okay? Proverbs 31. Let's go in the Word of God today, and let's, let's be blessed. Let's relax. Let's have a good day today. This is Mama's Day. We're going to do a little reminiscing, and I love to do that on Mother's Day. Don't always do that on Mother's Day, but we'll have some thoughts along the way, moms, that'll help be to you. Come on back tonight. The, the lessons and the messages that Dr. Davis are giving are excellent. He does about 100 to 150 pictures in the presentation. We'll have it up here on the uh, TV screens tonight. Last Sunday night, he did all, it's all about parenting, how to be a good parent. If you, even if your kids are grown, it's good for grandparents to know how to relate to their grandchildren and how to be a good parent that way in helping their sons and daughters to be the, uh, the moms and dads they need to be. Of course, we don't try to infringe on the right of those at new home, but we do want to be able to be a help and support to them and hopefully give you some thoughts along the way. But tonight, uh, last week he did how to be a team, how to be a team as a mom and dad in the home. And then tonight, three successful ways to in parenting. So I guarantee you, Dr. Davis, will fill you with a bunch of things that will help you in your home. Our homes desperately, one of the greatest burdens I have as a pastor, and we have good homes, but I'm saying in, a, in our society today, one of the biggest issues that we have is a need for uh, moms and dads to know how to raise godly children. Um, I, I, I'm a very big proponent on 
Did I turn this thing off? I don't think I did. I'm going to turn that off. I am a big proponent on not just raising good kids or kids with morals, but raising godly kids. And ladies and gentlemen, there is a big difference in that. <clears throat> Set out to be a parent, a mama or daddy. Now, dads, I'm not going to dwell on you so much, so I'll go do both barrel guns on you in, in Father's Day, okay? <clears throat> but be a godly mama. One of the best ways you can raise godly children is to be a godly mama. Not just a good mama. Some of you may disagree with me. There are a lot of good mamas. They gave good morals to their children. A lot of us in this room, you were raised by good mamas. Not only being a good mama, be a godly mama. And I'll explain what that's about. Look there at Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman. Many of you know the verses in the passage, but I'm going to pick a couple of verses out in just a few moments as we go along. Who can, verse number 10. I don't feel like this is loud enough, guys. If you'll turn me up, Eli, would you turn me up? Eli, am I loud enough? I want it to be louder. A little bit louder, please. Okay? Okay, a little too loud. Okay. I like, I like this message so much, I want to hear it myself. Okay? I'm sorry, Elizabeth, I didn't mean to correct you. I want it loud enough I can hear it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Eli. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Now you're a little too loud. Go down just a little bit. Okay. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Wow, ladies, there's a big challenge here. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She's industrious in the home. All right? Uh, she is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She's going she's to have good preparation of the meals in the family. All right? And she's willing to be, do more than, than frank and beans all the time. Okay? Or just macaroni every night. Okay? Oh, preacher, you're really going to meddling now. Okay. All right. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, uh, she, uh, she is also one to try to help the home financially. She can help in this. And buyeth it, and with the fruit of her hand she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength. You're going to see the word strength in this text uh, a few times. A, a godly woman, a good woman, a virtuous woman is going to be someone who is a strong woman. Now the Lord will make you strong, ladies. But there's some things that you can do in your home that will also strengthen yourself. And these are some of the things we're talking about here. Uh, she girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. There's a lot of old-time religion in, in what a mama does or a, a wife does in the home. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She even works at times into the night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. Now, I understand we got Walmart down the road. You can buy clothes, or you can go over to JCPenney or wherever else you go to buy clothes or Amazon. I know that's different today, but it wouldn't hurt to some of you young ladies coming up, some of you ladies to learn, you know, how to use a needle and thread. Maybe I need a duck. You know, where's my Omi sign? Where's it at? I'm going to get that out today. Amen. Or oh me. That's a little bit of an oh me on that one, right? Well, it does help. All right. She layeth her hands to the spindle, her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She's not just going to take care of the needs in her family. She's also looking out for others beyond her family. She has a compassionate heart. A virtuous, godly woman has a compassionate heart. Let's go further. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes sure that, that clothing is proper and warm and so forth if there's a need to, to go outside, okay? Uh, she takes care of things like that. So kids, next time when mama says, get your coat on, you'll know why, okay? You're going to get a cold. She says that for a reason. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Tapestry, she, she decorates the home. Fellas, don't be so much against your wife as she decorates that home and makes it a special place, you know. 
Amen. Ladies, you should have said amen on that one. I just gave you about $1,000 spending money on that one. <laughs> All right. Her clothing is silk and purple. She, she dresses nice. She, she may not have a lot, but she dresses as nice as she can. Okay? She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Merchant Again, she's industrious. Strength, notice the word strength again. Strength and honor are her clothing. Now, how does she get honor? I'm going to get to that. Okay? Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. When will she rejoice, preacher? Preacher, I, it's a hard thing being a mama and being a wife. When am I going to get my chance to rejoice? All right, hang tight with me, okay? She openeth her mouth. Ladies, you ought to, you ought to highlight, underline verse 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. By the way, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. You can teach your kids even right and wrong. Again, morals. But how sometimes you need to know the difference between not what is right and wrong. You need to know what is the difference between, for your children, between what is good and what is best. And it's going to take wisdom from God in order to do that. Knowledge is knowing right from wrong or knowing things. Wisdom is knowing how to do those things and how to apply those things of knowledge. God bless the woman who cries out to God every day, Lord, I need your wisdom, not just human wisdom. I want your wisdom. If any man or woman lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who, and God will grant it liberally and upbraideth not. He will not hold back, but ask in faith. All right? So a woman of wisdom. I can actually say, and I'll praise my wife today, my wife is a woman of wisdom. Okay? And in her, she, matter of fact, she's a better preacher than I am. Amen? And in her tongue, you ought to highlight this next phrase. Oh, please highlight this next phrase. And in her tongue, ladies, when you're dealing with the kids, you're dealing with your husband in the home, in her tongue is the law of kindness. Oh, I ought to dwell there about half an hour. Law of kindness. There's a lot of yelling and screaming and hollering in a home that should never be. All right, give me the old me and amen out again. If you're a lady who hollers and screams at your husband and hollers and screams at your children, you're missing the mark because this is a much better way. Your house ought to be a place that your husband and your kids look forward to coming home to. A home is different than a house. You can live in a shack and still have a home. You live in a house where that home is in that house and makes it special. Okay, and having a love for your husband, having a love for your children. How do you show that? You show it with the law of kindness. The Bible teaches in the New Testament how to win, how a, a saved, saved wife can win a lost husband. The Bible says they do it through a meek, that doesn't mean weak, meekness is power under control. Moses was known as Moses the meek, but he was a great leader. Meekness, with meekness and quietness. You, you want to change the heart of your husband? You have a meek and quiet spirit about you? You had a strong, because this woman is a strong woman? Strength can be showed more than just in the forcefulness of your voice. Preacher, you don't go on to meddling now. Again, all right. I'm trying to help us here. Look at verse 27. I'll get off that one. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Paul had to deal with women going from house to house and in the New Testament, there, he called them busybodies. That's the scriptural word he called it. Don't be idle in your home. Don't be lazy, you know, to be busy. And as you've read in the prior verses, it's really greatly teaching this. But look what takes place. All right, we read up in verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. <clears throat> How is she going to rejoice? Because in verse 28, and this is my text this morning, she, her children arise up and call her blessed. And her husband gets in on it and praises her. You've heard me say at different times, I've praised my wife. Uh, and I'll continue to do so. And, and a husband ought to praise his wife. Okay? 
maybe if you treated her like a thoroughbred, she wouldn't come out like a nag. <laughs> that was free. Okay? Yeah, some of you treat her wrong, guys. You need to get over that one, too. Preacher, I thought that was for next month. Okay, that just came to mind. Okay. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. You will be rewarded. If you're a godly mama, a virtuous woman, you will be rewarded in this lifetime, too. And then, for those of you who have mamas who have gone on, when I was preparing this message, I was thinking of Ms. Brown. Her daughters are here this morning, her granddaughters are here with us this morning. Ms. Brown was 104 years old, passed away uh, last year, of, uh, a deaf lady in our church. Sweet, Christian, godly lady, you know. What I'm preaching about today is, how are your children going to rise up and call you blessed? Are they going to do it in this life? Or are they going to be able to do it after you're gone? Now, if you're like my family, when we get together, a, big, a whole family gets together, Thanksgiving, Christmas, it becomes a, a time where the kids sometimes reminisce about how they, when we, they were children and mom and dad, how it winds up being things, them talking and laughing, cutting up back and forth with each other, and John and, and Laura and Carrie and Amy sit there and they joke about things, crazy things that daddy said, crazy things mama does, and they go back and forth about it and everybody's laughing and cutting up and we have a good time. And then sometimes they talk about things they got away with. <laughs> My son's smiling. That's, that's enough for me. <laughs> yeah, and what they got away with and probably still getting away with for all I know. But... Uh, but then there are times, you know, I watch my kids come up to my wife and they'll put a, give her a big hug and say, Mom, I love you. Carrie got up this morning. All right, Carrie, I'm redeeming myself. <laughs> Fixed his mama, scrambled eggs and toast and juice and took it to her in bed. One of the things. Last night he came home with a bunch of flowers. Today, John and... and I'm not trying to, and Laura and all of us are going to get together over at John's house. Last night, he got a hold of a bread machine, and he's made homemade hamburger rolls. I'm married to Dawn. I'm going to get some of the hamburger rolls. <laughs> it's going to be good. I know we're laughing a little more this morning. I don't usually do this, but I, I think we ought to be rejoicing over our mamas. But what kind, of, what kind of memory, ladies, are you going to leave in the minds and the hearts of your kids after you're gone? Mm -hmm. One husband had married to his wife for 60 years, and they, she raised children in the home. And he wrote this, I thought it was really sweet. He put on the tombstone, of course, his, his wife's name and, and date of birth and death. He put on her these words She made home happy. Susan, I think one of the things I love about mom, and I see that in you, your smile when you smile like her. You laugh like her. My mama would rear back her head and just cackle and laugh. It brought joy to the home. When's the last time, mama, you laughed in your home? When's the last time you brought joy in the home? You know, you can correct a child and correct a child and correct a child, but if you don't praise that child and then have some time of relationship with them, Rules without relationship lead to rebellion. If you don't have that relationship with your kids, and some of it has to be a joyful time, then it'll lead to rebellion in your home. Hmm. Oh, like I said, all these things are free. Okay? Here we go. My mother's name, our mother's name, was Jacqueline. They call, we called her, or they called her, Jackie. Like our Jackie here. <coughs> Jacqueline Ann. Charles, her maiden name was uh, Char uh, Bab, Jacqueline B. Charles, and they called her Jackie. But I loved, I loved being around my mama. I loved just the care that she took, all these things. As you're, a lot of these things you're, we read about this morning, my mama did. I have 
the privilege of being saying that. And so I want to honor her today in that. You know, uh, rise up and call her blessed, if you please. Uh, Ms. Brown, I thought of the Brown family and the time we spent together and fellowshipping about after she had passed. and They just laughed and we were laughing and enjoying the things about Mama. I still remember her symbols, how she would say stop, you know, to the kids and all the wonderful things that you could. Remember the good things about Mama. Mamas, ladies, you can say amen with me. Mamas aren't perfect. Daddies are not perfect. But you think about it, there's some good things about Mama I hope that you can remember and hope that you go through the day and remember those things. There are living memorials, and yes, there are memorials to our mamas after they're gone. One of the things about my mama I've said many times about my parents, I said if I could, two things, if I could just sit down with them again, both of them are in heaven, uh, as far as I know, they're in heaven, and um, two things I wish that I could sit down with them and just talk with them. I think, Susan, you'd agree with me with that. We just want to talk to them. We miss talking to them and talk, them talking to us, you know. And then I do miss my mama's fried chicken. Amen. Now, now I'm not slighting my wife in that by no means. You know, there is Chick-fil-A and there are some other places. But I, I, I do, you know, Adam and Eve have the greatest relationship. Adam never had to listen to Eve uh, talk about past boyfriends. And Eve never had to listen to Adam talk about how Mama used to cook. <laughs> you think about it. Okay. Again, we're little, little tidbits today. I thought this was kind of cute, ladies. A bride who just got married just several months before was in the kitchen, and she was sawing away at the end of a ham. Just sawing away at it. Her neighbor walked in the back door of the kitchen and said, Why are you sawing off the end of that ham? Because my Mama always did it. A few days later, the neighbor saw the, it was all close-knit community, so the mama saw the bride's mother, said, your daughter tells me you always saw off the end of a ham before you bake it. I wonder why. She said, well, frankly, I do it because my mother did it. Why don't you give her a call? She knew the family. So she calls the grandmother who lives in the same town. She said, I just want to ask you about, you know, your granddaughter sawing off the ham. She said, why did you? They all trace it back to you because you did it. She said this, she said, I never owned a baking pan large enough to hold a ham. <laughs> that would make sense, wouldn't it? <laughs> Ezekiel 16, There is a Bible verse, ladies. Please, please write this verse down or, or count somehow keep it in your mind. I didn't know this until I studied this message. I've read the Bible many times. But I somehow passed over the verse in Ezekiel 16, 44. I'm not asking you to turn there. I just want to quote the part of the verse to you. As is the mother, so is her daughter. You want to be a living memorial and they rise up and they call you blessed? I know, Susan, your kids rise up and... Jessica, y'all praise your mom. I've heard it many times. My kids, we do that, they do it with Dawn. And you do that too, folks. I'm not just using my family as an example. Saying, you do that. You praise them for what they're doing. But let's face it, ladies. As you are in the home, character, it's not so much altogether what we do. We do these things in Proverbs 31 because of who we are in the heart. As is the mother, so is her daughter. You ever watched it where a daughter will be raised in the home and she winds up doing a lot of things that mama did, like we talked about this crazy ham? That's because mama did it. I learned it that way. Mama taught me how to do this. Uh, now with my sister, she's an excellent chef, and a lot of the things that her daughters have learned, they learned at her hand. And they learned from, she, you would say you learn a lot from our mother, you know. As is the mother, so is the daughter. What a power, ladies, that you possess. It's called the influence power. You make a difference in your children's lives, not just your daughter, because of the influence. You've heard the old saying, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. It's very true. If you trace back some of the presidents, don't read it. It's too long to read it right now. Read it when you get home. On the back of the bulletin, Amy put in there 
about the president and his mother. And one of our presidents there, I read this and I forgot his name, but one of the presidents there, he had a godly mother. There's an old song, it's not in our hymn book, but it's called, Tell Mother I'll Be There. In answer to her prayers, he's talking about when she's in heaven, tell her, somebody, angels, tell her I'll be there. Because I'm saved, I know I'm saved, I'm on my way. Tell mother I'll be there. It was written from the story of a godly president who was raised at the hands of a godly mama. He talked or somehow telegrammed this lady every day. I thought that was quite fascinating. The communication line was there because the communication was there when he lived in the home. As is the mother, so is her daughter, okay? Ah. Uh. You can raise good, good mama, good children, or you can raise not so good children. There's been some pretty bad mamas in life. Nero, who was the one that had the Apostle Paul slain. Nero was one of the worst emperors that Rome ever had. He persecuted more Christians, killed more Christians than just about all of them. He would take Christians and line them and put them on stakes and line them up and down the, the roadway and use them as torches in the night. His mother, Nero's mother, was a murderess. She killed many people. I wonder where Nero learned that. Be careful. Be careful, ladies, what you're teaching your kids. And, and then the character influences that you give forth to them, okay? Will your children rise up and call you blessed? Or will they curse you? I thought this was interesting. Some mamas were seated around a table, and the first question was raised. How old should you, a child be before you begin to start training them for God? In other words, the Bible teaches that we are to, our parents are to nurture our children in the admonition of the Lord. So how are you going to train your children in the ways of the Lord? One mama get to be was, spoke up and said, I think you ought to start when they're six years old. You know, when they start going into first grade, then you can start training about some things about the Lord. And the other mama raised her hand and said, no, I think you're waiting a little too long. I think five years old should be the age where they can start to learn some things and you can nurture them. Don't put off so much, so long and wait till they're six. The other mama said, no, I think this should be four. And the other mama raised her hand. She said, I think that you should start even when they start walking. Like a little Grayson, Allie, our grandchildren are just walking now. Oh, they're getting into a lot of things. Yes. And, and then... One old mama raised her hand. I can tell you when you need to start training. And they all got the ears and kind of perked up. She said, you start 20 years ago. With the grandmama raising the mama, you mamas, in the home. And then you can start raising your children as they get along. What was she saying? Paul said to Timothy in the last book he wrote, he wrote half the New Testament. In this last book he says to him, he says to Timothy, the young, young son in the faith, by the way, Paul is going to be getting ready to be beheaded by Nero at the end of this book. It'll, it doesn't tell about it, but he does go and he does die for his faith in Christ. So you've got Paul... And he's, he's about 65, 66 years of age at this time. And Timothy, they guesstimated, was about 32, 33. Listen to what the old apostle writes to Timothy, the young preacher. He says, greatly desiring to see thee. I want to see you, Timothy. Being, he was in Rome in the prison. Being mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance, that he said, I'm remembering something about you, Timothy. The unfeigned faith that is in thee. You know what the word unfeigned means? It simply means real. The unfeigned faith that is in thee. He said, I'm remembering, I'm thinking about you, Timothy. I'm missing you. I want to see you. And I remember your tears and your, you, want to, you want to see me. And I am about to die, but I want you to know, know something. I remember something about you specially. Now watch, we're talking about a legacy. We're talking about a heritage for your children. What are they going to remember after you're gone? What are they going to remember as you get older? Are they going to praise you? 
Are they going to call you blessed? Listen to what the preacher said to the young preacher. He said, he said, I remember your unfeigned faith. The word literally means unwaxed. Feigned means false. Un means unfalse. True. Unwaxed. How many have, I remember my mama used to have, Susan, you remember this. On the dining room table, she had a bowl of fruit. This was back in the 60s, folks, the 70s. I learned quickly, you don't go in and bite that fruit. It was that, oh, it looked pretty. It was beautiful. You know, sin always does look pretty and beautiful. And I tried to bite that thing. Oh, no. It was fake. Paul says, your faith in Jesus Christ, Timothy, is not fake. It's real. He said, unwaxed, basically, unfeigned faith, which is in thee. And then he said, well, how did it get in you? How did you get saved, Timothy? Listen, here we go, ladies. Which that unfeigned faith, that true faith that I realize, I call to remembrance about you, Timothy, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice. I remember how you got saved, Timothy. It's that real faith that your grandmama Lois had. It's that real faith that your, your mama Eunice had. And then he says this, And I am persuaded that in thee also, as is the mother, so is her daughter. I'm not saying every child will get saved. And I'm saying, most of the time, if you have a mama who's a godly mama, you're not just talking about good, but godly, a virtuous woman, a woman who fears the Lord, a woman who obeys the Lord. Um, look, look there with me, verse number 29 in the passage we were in. Many daughters have done virtuously. Many daughters have done good. Many daughters have done even some of these things in this passage, he's saying. Many daughters are good. But notice what he says there. But thou excellest them all. How do you excel them all? You take it to the next level. You're not just a good mama. You're a godly mama. Prove it to me, preacher. I'm so glad you asked. Are you ready? Look at verse 30. He explains what he means. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. If all we concern about is the outside, then you've got a problem. But a woman that, say the next words with me, would you, church? But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Paul went on. He was talking to Timothy. In the scriptures here, he said, but can, in, the, in the two, three chapters later in the book of 2 Timothy, but again before he dies, he says, but pa, pa, Timothy, I want to warn you something. He said, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. How did he learn them? How did Timothy learn it? At the hands of Mama Eunice and Grandmama Lois. And he says, and at, from the next statement, from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. How do you make a difference, mama, in your home? Is that you teach them the scriptures. John Wesley's mama uh, and Charles Wesley, uh, they were ones that started the Methodist church many, many, many years ago. They started it. But they were raised in the home of Susanna Wesley. She had 19 children. Now back a couple hundred years ago, a lot of them died. They want the medicines to be able to, about half of them survived. She raised John and Charles Wesley on her knee. She did that simply by quoting the scriptures and dealing with the scriptures with them and praying with them. All right, question. When's the last time? If you're going to be a woman that fears the Lord, when's the last time you prayed with your children? 
When's the last time you read the scriptures to them and talked about from the Bible to them? When's the last time, as he said to Timothy, from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures? Every, every person in this room was raised in a godly home, even though you may have rebelled against it at the time, or maybe you accepted it. You ought to get on your knees and thank God that your mom and your daddy took the time to show you the Lord and show you the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord will save you from, it may not be the most perfect life, but it will save you from a lot of heartache. It will guide you down the right path. Amen, preacher. Yes, it will. Mama, do you pray? Samuel's mother, Hannah, prayed and she got Samuel and he became one of the greatest judges in the, in the history of Israel. John the Baptist's mama prayed and God gave her John the Baptist and he called the nation back to the Lord and made, paved the way for Jesus. Jochebed was the mother of Moses and you know the story there. Well, it goes on from there. There's so many godly mamas who have made an influence in the lives of their children. I guess what I'm trying to say to us today is what influence are you having in your home and will your children rise up and call you blessed? Is there laughter in your home? Is there good food in a clean home? It may not be a perfect home. Sometimes our home gets messy. You live in it day to day, it's going to get messy. When someone calls us and says, Preacher, we're coming over to visit. Then we, you know what happens in our home? We call it the rapture. Because everything in the house gets picked up immediately, you know. You do it too. Yeah, you do. Don't look at me pious. Are you a godly example? Are you praying with your kids? Are you reading the Bible to them? Are you training them? You either training them for good or training them for bad. You either training them with wisdom or you training them with just plain old knowledge. And I just want my kids to be good. The Bible says in verse 31, give her of the fruit of her hands. There is a reaping, ladies. I've watched my kids, and I'm about to cry. I've watched my kids take time with their mama now that they're grown, take her out to eat, invite her over to eat, go take her to a, a shop, whether buy presents or get things for her. And they do things for her even when it's not Mother's Day. I'll leave one last thought with you. Look at verse number 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue has got the law of kindness in it. I want to encourage you mamas, speak to your children kindly. Spend time with your kids. Love on them. I had a whole other section I wanted to do this morning. But God's not going to let me do that today. Maybe another time. The number one thing is about Timothy's parents, her mom and his mom and grandmother, they had it settled in their heart that they were saved, <coughs> that they were born again. They had the faith in Christ. I want to ask you a question this morning, ladies. Do you know Christ, That what Paul talked about? Do you know, be, are you a godly woman like this woman we talk about in Proverbs 31? Are you born again? Are you on your way to heaven? Are you training your children to one day, hopefully they'll receive the Lord. You can't make the decision for them, I know that. But you can guide them to Christ and see them trust the Savior that you've had the joy of walking with all your life. Where's the laughter in the home? Where's the, where's the faith in the home? Where's the... Where's the physical of, of taking care of the kids in the home? It's a challenge today, I know. But the rewards are unbeatable. Let's bow for prayer. When I ask you, do you know the Savior? Have you been born again? Do you know that if you died, you'd go to heaven? Have, have you, has one ever, anyone ever shared with you that, that we're all sinners? And we have to pay for our sin one day. And Christ paid it for us on the cross. He took our guilt. And that's the love of God. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever 
believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's not just believing in him, it's believing on him. Believing on Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. There's some negative, but there's some positive. Yes, I'm a sinner, but I need a Savior. And Jesus died for me. That's what Paul's talking about, that unfeigned faith, that real faith, that you're saved and you know the Lord and you've walked with Him and you're talking with Him and He's walking and talking with you. And He's the one that helps you to be that godly mama. Strength and honor is worked out through God. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. But the gift of God is eternal life. Have you received that gift of eternal life? God commendeth or showed His love toward us and while we were sinners, Christ died for us. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today. You can come to Christ today. If you're not saved, come and get that real faith in Christ Jesus. You're not joining our church. You're not getting baptized. We're a Baptist church, but we've got a baptism behind me here, but it doesn't save you. Only Christ can save. Come to Christ today. It's a relationship. And then that relationship is then born out in the relationship to your husband and to your children. And I know sometimes we have single parents. And my heart goes out to them. And God can work through your life and you may have to be mom and daddy to them and show the love of Christ and speaking, yes, the law of kindness and yet with wisdom, open your mouth with wisdom, fear the Lord, and one day they'll arise up and call you blessed. Husbands need to praise her today. Praise her before your children. Lift her up before the children. Yes, I know we're not perfect. But there are a lot of good things that we don't take account of that we need to be praising about. Count your blessings, name them one by one. I think one of those greatest blessings in life is mama. Please stand with me with heads bowed and eyes closed. Belle is playing the piano this morning. We have an old-fashioned altar. I want to invite you to come and to pray. Maybe some of the things we talked about this morning uh, you need to just talk to the Lord about. Maybe you need to ask his forgiveness. It might mean you need to ask your kids forgiveness or ask your husband's forgiveness. For, but that's a good thing. Let's get an old cleansing. Let's have an old-fashioned cleansing this morning. We talk about going home and cleaning the house up. Why don't we clean the spiritual part of our own hearts, our own homes of our heart? And let us be and let Christ flow through our lives through into the lives of our children and grandchildren. You can't do it on your own. In this society, it's very difficult, so God is only the one up for it, and He'll help you to do so. You may be seated. I'm going to ask our guys to come. we got something special for all our ladies today. Whether you are a mother or you have a mother. Uh, and if we have enough of these guys, I want to do the teen girls if we can too. Okay, but for right now, just any of our ladies, if you guys just come on, just pass them out. This is in honor of our moms today. Okay? Now, mom, if you see a color they've got in their hand, ask for it. That's fine. There's some of you have mamas who have gone on uh, in this life, and we have uh, the old story of the red rose and the white rose. And, uh, we got some things we just want to give you today to honor you and for all of what you do. I know that's very tiny, very little, but from the hearts, uh, from this pastor and the hearts of all these dear men and children, we want to prize up and, ca and call you blessed and praise you today. Josiah's handing out hugs along with the carnation. Way to go, Josiah. He's my buddy with a heart. I pray God he never changes. Okay, everybody got one? Got a few more? Okay, do we have enough? 
Okay, how many more we got, Daniel? Do we know? You got plenty? Teenage girls, did you guys get one? Teenage girls, young ladies? Everybody got one? Nursery, check nursery for me, Daniel. They already, you already got nursery, beautiful, beautiful. And so how many do you think we got left? Any left? We got plenty left. Got plenty left? 15 or 20 left? 15 or 20 left? Any? All right. See these guys. <laughs> After the service, maybe you have a special, maybe you're going to go see mom in the nursing home. Maybe you're going to go see your mama somewhere else or whatever it is. You want to give out to another special lady in your life. Ladies, you have a, a, a special lady in your life you want to give it out to. Take and use those. We want to be a blessing to the ladies today. Okay? All right. Goodbye. God bless you. Happy Mama's Day. Take her out to some place ritzy and fancy.